Hi, I'm Ensign and Strider, and this is my yet again overdue uh, review of Batman Eternal issue 3. Now, just look at that cover. Go on, just, just soak it up. Just soak it up, right? That is one beautiful cover. I love it. It's, it's fantastic. I just love that co cover. But there is one problem with it. Just go on, soak it in. Now, you tell me, if, you, if you've not read this, what would you think is going to be in a cover like that with the Batmobile speeding through explosions and flames and cars flying out the way and there's like even a guy with a machine gun right right there, you know, being thrown out. You just take, me, take a minute just to, what would you think would be in the issue? You would, you know, I mean, it looks a bit like um, that scene with the uh, Batpod from... Uh, the Dark Knight, the, the movie. Um, you, you, you're thinking of that, or you, 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 you'd expect to see that within the pages of this. No, it doesn't. That doesn't happen in in this issue. That was that right there. That speaks to the uh, the little boy in me who read Batman books back in the day. Does I got giddy looking at that cover? Just like I was just imagining what was going to happen in this in this issue. That doesn't happen in this issue. Why, why show it? It's not going to happen. That right there is to grab your attention and just like uh, give you an idea of what's going to happen in the issue. And um, when I saw that, I was like, "Oh, this is this is going to be a good issue." And then just like that scene doesn't happen. It's nice to look at, granted, but that scene does not happen in this issue. So don't go picking it up thinking that's going to happen because it doesn't happen. So um, as always, with my reviews, I will be discussing what I think of it to begin with, and then at the end, I will discuss spoilers and what actually happens in the issue. Um, I will give you a warning beforehand if you don't want any spoilers, so you can just disappear at that point. So, what do I think of, um, of the issue? I loved it again. Um, this is, yet again, not the most action-packed issue, but what, it happen what happens in terms of story, um, generated a lot of interest for me. I, I, I loved everything that happened in this issue. Uh, the pacing in the last issue was a little bit off. Uh, scenes chopping and changing. Uh, at one point the uh, scenes switched so fast I actually believed uh, one guy, uh, well two separate guys, to be just one guy. Um, to clarify in the last issue I thought um, Blackfire may have also been the guy in the subway um, but I did also say in my, my review that he would have had to have travelled at least halfway across the city to do that. Um, so I wasn't buying it. Um, but that was the last issue, I'm talking about this issue now. Um, yet again, um, so it's good, it's good old fashioned story based stuff. There's very little action here, there's, there's, there is a bit, but uh, it's very little amount. Uh, good old story based stuff. Um, and this isn't talking about spoilers. But you, if you want to gonna pick this up because there is a big, big Bat Family um, character make their uh, new 52 debut in this issue. Um, it is gonna be an origin story of said character, um, which I'm happy about because they don't seem to have changed things around that much, which makes me very happy. Um, it seems to be faithful to the original origin story. Um, and they show you this character on the very first page, which just as soon as I opened the, the book up, I was just like, wow, this is going to be a good issue, if this is the direction they're going. There does seem to be um, some sort of uh, gearing things up, um, a change um, to the new 52 Batman universe, trying to get the Bat universe to back to where it were before the new 52. Um, it, it just, that's the sort of vibe I was getting from this issue. Um, and I was loving it. The artwork, yet again, same artist, still fantastic. There was a few scruffy um, panels in the uh, last issue, um, but when the artwork was of that quality, in the, uh, of this quality, in, in the past um, issue, you wouldn't have even minded it. There was just a few scruffier panels, but when the, um, these scruffier panels beats quite a lot of the artwork I see for quite a lot of comics across Marvel and DC uh, and Image. Um, when, when that art, the scruffy panels beats the artwork that I see in some of those comics, 
it's not an issue uh, in here all the panels nice and clean nice and crisp you can make out all the details lovely absolutely fantastic still digging the um, digging the uh, the art style uh, so yeah the story does um, ramp up yet again uh, which is nice to see this happening because this is going to be a 52 parter uh, I still don't be don't believe we've got all the plot details and I think maybe the next issue and the issue after that will still be getting um, plot development then maybe a bit, um, a bit of action just to change the pace up and then probably back to story again so I'm loving that this is a very story driven comic book um, and the action is being kept at a minimum for the time being um, I do love a nice good story and this is what this is delivering um, week after week um, I was hope I'm, I'm hoping that the the creative team behind this don't change the artists and um, just keep the artist um, as it is I think that's the the guy whose name I can't pronounce Jason Fabok um, and the, the just I, I'm, I'm loving it I really do I just hope this art doesn't change as the uh, as the series goes on I'm like really invested in this series now come issue three uh, it's so very very good um, if there is one slight um, worry that I have it's well no it's it's, it's hard to describe I, there there, do, there is still the niggling feeling that there is going to be a crossover, um, well, numerous crossovers uh, with this uh, series still. Um, a recent e interview with uh, Scott Snyder, he was saying uh, Batman Eternal is going to be an event that, um, you know, we had to set up certain things because this was going to echo throughout the uh, Bat universe. And I was thinking, does that mean tie ins? I mean, I hope not. I do hope in the uh, respective characters' books. Uh, that the events of Batman Eternal are referenced uh, but nothing more than that because this is a big thing that is affecting all of Gotham um, and at the end of the book there's a very nice just you know how there's always the next issue when I saw the next issue um, little panel where it like, gives you a little hint of what's going to come next and they have already showed the um, artwork they showed it at the very back page of issue one um, I, I was blown away. Um, this is something that I can't wait to see. But that's uh, in the next review, review for issue four. So again, if you are reading this, but you are a Batman fan, you really should be reading it. Um, most Batman fans that I know are reading this uh, title. It's so much fun. It's a Batman story through and through, and I am really enjoying it. Um, so much so that I'm considering going back and picking up. Um, new 52 range uh, Batman stories that I haven't been reading um, I think the only one that I've made any leeway into reading in the new 52 in the uh, Batverse is um, uh, Course of Owls, the opening story arc uh, Death, in the, Death of the Family and Teen Titans their involvement with the Death of the Family which was shockingly shit they were fighting hobos I kid you not, they were fighting hobos in the Teen Titans involvement, death of um, death of a family story arc. <sighs> Moving on. So now I'm going to discuss spoilers. Um, so if you wish to leave now, please do so uh, because you have been warned. I am going to be dis discussing spoilers. Please leave now. I'm not going to be talking spoilers to those of you who are still here. I'm going to be talking spoiler. Spoiler is on the very first page. Well, not spoiler, it's Stephanie Brown, but we know that later she becomes spoiler. Steph I'm going to show you. Stephanie Brown is on the first page. She later on in, in pre-New 52, uh, yeah, pre-New 52, she moved on to become Batgirl, um, and then I think she became spoiler again. Did she become Robin at one point? I think she became a female Robin at one point, the first female Robin. But just like, bam, there you go, something for the ladies. Or guys, if you like that thing, that's that's Arrow right there for you. It's just like if someone doesn't have the shirt off in Arrow, then you, you're not watching Arrow because there's just lots of shirtlessness. Shirtless men running around constantly. Watch Arrow if you like shirtless men. I watch Arrow. I don't like shirtless men, and sometimes when the shirtless men comes up, it kind of freaks me out a bit. But that's Roy Harper there, aka Arsenal, 
or a speedy as he's now being called green arrows original sidekick from back in the day but i'm getting off topic so spoiler there she is love me some spoiler so <laughs> as soon as i opened the uh opened the comic and i saw spoiler this there stephanie brown just staring out the um, out the page at me i was just like <laughs> we're going into some serious bat family shit right now um i am so excited to see what they do with this character um i knew she was turning up there was um in i think it was detective or was it batman i think it was batman issue 28 there was a preview of um events to come in batman eternal and she was actually in that issue but i'm not going to talk about that and i didn't read too much of that issue because i just flicked through it uh, just like is, is this tied to batman eternal because i would have picked it up if it was uh, but it was kind of like a, a, a you know th that things that are going to be um, coming up so i was just like i, I'm, I, I don't want to read that i'll read it in batman eternal when it happens of course if that scene doesn't happen in batman eternal i might have to go and find batman number 28 and then review that also i'm going to show you that as well just like if you go into any conventions in the future that's nightwing's tonfa sticks right there they're probably hella expensive but just they are so nice and i want them but they probably like cost hundreds and hundreds of pounds so yeah stephanie brown she's uh walking through the suburbs of gotham uh late at night you know because she's a bright girl like that um she's on her phone to her mum she's like I've got to go back to dad's I left my cue pad there <sighs> she left a cue, cue pad oh, that was a little couldn't she have just said I left my laptop it was like this pointless kind of is but kind of isn't a, you know an advert for iPad we know we're talking about iPad either come out and say iPad or don't bother with the weird sort of marketing for a non-product thing and to say i left my laptop there something anything would have been better than that but it does the q pad um, thing kind of i didn't like that too much but still stephanie brown i was happy so um, stephanie brown walking through see some um suburbs of gotham she uh, gets to her dad's house door is locked she signs off talking to her mum she's just like you know just picking up a few things not a q pad and you know, she, she's locked out of her dad's anyway. She hangs up on her mum. She's locked out of her dad's. She knows where she keeps the, uh, um, where her dad keeps the uh, the key, Arthur Brown. Uh, is his name Arthur Brown? I took, yeah, I took notes yet again. Arthur Brown, she knows where um, uh, he keeps his spare key. She gets that, lets herself in, and she interrupts her dad's poker night. If most normal poker nights involved a bunch of B-list villains sat around uh, a k kitchen table in their uh, villain outfits, um, you know, playing poker, but there weren't even there were no cards. There was, it was it's not Halloween. There's, you can't get around this. There's no explanation for it. So it's just I, I was just like that. The scene on itself is bizarre. The only B-list villain that I could recognise. Um, from the one sat on the table. Of course, there was Arthur Brown there, Clue Master, um, in his get up, which looked kind of cool actually. Um, it was all uh, yellow and red. Uh, the only other one I recognised was uh, Lockdown. I think the one sat to his right was maybe Firefly or Firebug. I don't know. And then there was another guy who had a glowing thing in his chest. Uh, this is why the review is late as well. I actually dug out my DC encyclopedia and flicked through it page by page looking for a villain that matched this guy and uh, I just couldn't find them. I looked it up on the wiki trying to find who this guy were. Um, if you like your B-list villains this is the issue for you because some more turn up later. Um, so they're sat around the um, the kitchen table they're, um, they've got a map of Gotham in, th in front of them. They're obviously planning something. And then Stephanie is, while she's like saying to her dad, like, what the hell's going on here? Uh, some guy in the shadows, I kid you not, does no one change the fucking light bulbs in Gotham City? Just, uh, yeah, another guy in the shadows knocks her out from behind. And yeah, so, yeah, she, so she's taken out. Um, scene cuts to the Gotham City Police Department uh, with Major Forbes who are meant to 
mentioned in the first issue I didn't I kind of didn't know if he was going to be a big part in this or not um, it turns out he is going to be a big part in this because uh, Forbes is back in the GCPD they're discussing the events of the night with the whole uh, subway crash and that there feels like there is something uh, big on the, on the horizon something uh, fairly evil is going to happen um, they feel like the night is not yet over um, so Forbes is there he's still being a dick um, which is he's constantly talking about um, how things used to be run if uh, things were like they were five years ago um, you know, we wouldn't be in this mess you know we, we'd be doing uh, our jobs that were meant to be done which to him is not doing his job just sitting behind the desk uh, while the criminals run free uh, under uh, Carmine uh, is it Falcone? it is Falcone isn't it? so I'm going to have to check my I get the two crime families mixed up I sure I wrote it down here ice cream vans back um, did, I, did I write it down? yeah it's Falcone I sometimes get the Falcone and the uh, the other crime family whose name I've, um, I've completely forgotten now but I get those mixed up so um, yeah back when things with Falcone were in charge just like letting him just run things and the police not doing anything because they're all corrupt fuckers um, it's this point as well that uh, Sawyer also turns up um, I believe she's part of the Batwoman book but I don't know to what extent um, the guy behind the counter of where I get my comic books from, um, he's just like, oh, I love Sawyer. She's uh, she's in that in this issue. Uh, she's in the Batwoman books. I, was, I don't know. I don't need the Batwoman books. I've heard they're all fantastic though, so I might have to look up uh, look look up getting them. Uh, is it Gail Simone who works on Batwoman? Oh, no, it's Batgirl, isn't it? Um, so anyway, uh, Sawyer's also there um, and. She stands up to Mayor and there's a bit of discussion about who the next commissioner will be now that Jim Gordon is no longer in charge and it seems to be general consensus in the station that Sawyer will be the one to take over. Um, downstairs in the jail, uh, Bard, who was introduced in the first issue, not so much in the second issue but he's, uh, he's still knocking still around and he's talking to Jim Gordon down in the cells. Uh, he, Bard uh, is still referring to him as commissioner. Uh, Jim says I'm not a commissioner anymore kid um, and they have a little bit of discussion where it's Bard who's doing most of the uh, discussion though um, he, he's talking about uh, Batman's out there he's gonna find the one responsible for this and uh, we'll be able to clear this whole mess up he'll be out of here before the night's over uh, but Jim is adamant that he is human and he made the mistake he really is taking the blame for this and it's a nice scene actually it doesn't it's not on the it's not on the pages for too long. I think it runs for about a page, but I really do like seeing Jim feel like he is responsible for this thing, and just the art where it really does shine when you can just see how much this is affecting him because he um, is obviously distraught, and it, at this point he now has blamed himself. Um, it seems that if this were to go to court, he would confess guilty, um, which. It, hopefully it won't go to court but this is a series that's running for a year um, we don't know um, so the scene cuts yet again to the iceberg casino where we see the creepiest penguin ever I'm, I'm gonna have to show you this is <laughs> this is fantastic uh, penguin right here he still speaks with Nolan North's uh, voice now since playing the Batman uh, Arkham games but um, just look at him there that is fantastic um, I really do love the way the penguin is uh, in this issue just uh, and he, he's cre he's creepy um, he's talking to one of his employees of the iceberg casino uh, it's not the Ar iceberg lounge anymore it is the iceberg casino um, he's talking to one of his employees who's been stealing from him she stole four hundred thousand dollars from him that's a ballsy move right there um, she says like uh, please leave my boyfriend alone uh, she, she was working with a boyfriend on this uh, it was my idea and Penguin just says uh, I've already I've already had him fed to the sea lions or something it was something weird uh, seals I think I've already had him fed, fed to the seals so um, a bit weird but it's at this point where Batman uh, enters uh, the woman gets free and he intimidates uh, Cobblepot and it's actually a really good scene because Cobblepot doesn't actually look like he's that afraid of Batman they actually stand and discuss things 
in a sort of civilised manner. I mean, Batman is threatening him, but Cobblepot doesn't back down. I, I really like that. It's sometimes depicted that the Penguin is scared of the Batman, um, where he's he's not. He knows that he's got his money, um, he's got some good lawyers who will get him out of pretty much any trouble he needs, and he's got hired goons. Um, so they discuss Falcone being back in Gotham, uh, Batman accuses the Penguin of uh, being in on this, knowing about this, and Penguin says on the contrary, when his, you know, uh, crime family were in decline, his men came to me and I gave them employment, he knew where the power in this city was shifting when it, at the time that he left. Um, this scene actually wrangled with me a little, because wouldn't Batman know that? He was around at the time, you know, just, why? Um, we go to uh, City Hall as the next scene and Major Forbes is there with the Mayor and Falcone saying I know how things used to be run and you know I, it's great that you can give me this opportunity to speak with you and the, the Mayor and Falcone are like we believe you are the right man for the job if there was a sudden escalating crime tonight, how would you handle it? And he responds with, I think the police are a bit too busy to deal with that. You can see where this is going. Yeah. Goes to the Batcave. These are a nice two pages. I love these two pages. Even um, Robin's suit in the Batcave is still there. Um, really like that it was. This is a nice two pages though. But it's essentially Batman uh, picking up the pieces um, and trying to piece things together with the events of uh, the first two issues which I've already discussed so I'm not going to go over them again. There is an alert in the Batcave um, alerting Batman to uh, one of the Penguin's uh, weapon stashes is being opened which was kind of like throwing me back to Batman Arkham Origins a little bit. Um, so the, one of his uh, weapons cases is being opened and it's just like, you know, I'm going to have to go and deal with this. Um, sorry, itching my eye. So it's just like, I'm going to have to go and, uh, go and deal with this. It seems like things are happening tonight. Um, so I have to check my notes every, every now and again. Um, yeah, it's one of the Penguin's uh, weapon stashes. So he goes out to stop it. Shit's going down tonight because he had just informed uh, Penguin that you know, shit was going down. So, he goes back to the Brown residence and a shadowy, the, sh the shadowy figure from earlier, they still haven't changed that bulb, um, he, he's discussing their plans. Uh, once, if you guys do what you need to do uh, tonight, my associates can take control. This is the sort of general gist of the uh, dialogue. Uh, we also see that Stephanie Brown is not unconscious, she's actually led on the floor listening to the entire plan and the clue master is asked by said shadowy figure to kill his daughter. She now knows too much and she must be eliminated. So they weren't unaware that she was sat there with her eyes open and um, you know listening to the entire plan. The clue master, her father, agrees to kill her and he stands over her with a gun and says, you've been such a disappointment to me, Stephanie. And I was just like, that was such a gut punch. Just It's well written because there's hardly any words exchanged. He, ex he explains it away as just a sacrifice that he's going to have to make. That's cold. That's really, really cold. So, um... She hits his, his belt, he's got like a belt on, there's some like gas grenades on there, the uh, smoke grenades or whatever. They go off and uh, she runs away um, and escapes into the night. Um, we then cut back to Batman, uh, he's dealing with the, uh, the thugs who are accessing this weapons uh, stash. Um, of course this is a very Batman thing to do, he wasn't just going to go there and take the guns away, he'd wait for the criminals to actually show back up. Uh, one of my friends who read the issue was just like, why didn't he take the guns away? That's what Batman does. I'm like, oh, no, he'd want to get the people behind it. Um, so he goes there. It turns out it's not Penguin's thugs at all um, that are going for this stash of, um, stash of guns. It's actually Falcone's um, thugs. And there's a bit of a discussion after he you know, laid the beat down on them uh, that um, with one of the goons. One of the goons is saying, like, uh, we're the law now. Um, so I still have to check my notes, a lot happened in this issue. Um, 
come back to, um, to the uh, Penguin, back at the Iceberg uh, Casino. I keep wanting to say Iceberg Lounge. I um, don't know how I feel about it being Casino. I kind of like it and kind of just like the Iceberg Lounge is a little bit iconic. Um, and he's talking to yet more B-list villains. These are named, uh, under the name of Imperceptible Man and Mr. Mosaic. These aren't B-list villains, they're D-list villains and that's being generous. These guys were an odd looking bunch. Imperceptible man who's invisible. He's the invisible man. Instead, the criminals of uh, Gotham are obviously a higher class of criminal, and instead of saying invisible, they say imperceptible. There's Mr. Mosaic and Mr. Hypnotic and some really shy, speedless villains, but essentially in this scene, it's just the penguin saying, Tonight we go to war. Uh, there's a very brief uh, scene here where Batman's yet again racing to another, um, you know, the scene of another uh, crime in progress. Um, in fact, in the previous scene where he was talking to the, the goon, uh, it, Alfred did, did say to him already, oh, the spire's being uh, set all over Gotham. Um, and it's at this point where uh, Batman is going to set fire or whatever, and it's it, uh, basically, Alfred tells him over the radio. So it's a very short scene. Um, Alfred tells him over the radio that um, the GCPD aren't responding to this call. Um, we then cut back to the GCPD building, and Major Forbes, uh, Forbes, Major Forbes walks in with the mayor of Gotham. Major Forbes is now interim commissioner Forbes, and he decides the first poor, um, the first decision he's going to make, the thing that's going to stop crime in Gotham is for the GCPD to declare war on the Batman. He's responsible for everything. I will say that on the white um, board that he does draw the bat symbol on and put a cross through it, there is a nice little reference to Court of Owls and the Joker on there as cold cases. Uh, but other than that, the scene is fairly shocking. In the last closing panel, we see Stephanie Brown. She's escaped from uh, her father and she's huddled up behind a bin on the phone to her mum just saying like, I'm, they're trying to kill me and I know what their plan is. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Spoiler, the basic idea of why she became the Spoiler uh, daughter of the Clue Master was to stop her father's plans. That is her original origin story. So it seems that they're going with the original origin story and I couldn't be happier. But it then comes to the next issue panel and I'm going to mention this because I don't really mention it in my reviews that often but this one was a shocker. I've already seen the artwork for it. It was at the back of issue one. Batman faces Batgirl. So I love this issue. There's a lot going on and it looks like next issue there's going to be even more going on and I can't wait until tomorrow to pick it up. Um, I will be going uh, as soon as my comic book store is open because I am very excited to see what happens next. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with this old Batman versus Batgirl thing but that's going to be one hell of a fight and I am really, really looking forward to the issue. I. Uh, I'm just very excited. I've been counting down the days all week uh, waiting for this issue to come out. So I'm very, very excited to uh, be reading that tomorrow. And I will try to get my review out on time. Um, I can't guarantee it but tomorrow. It could be Thursday. It definitely won't be next week. I'm hoping I won't have to look up any B-list villains in an attempt to identify them. As I said, I only ended up identifying one on site and one was a maybe that it could be that guy. The others I just could not identify. Even when given their given their name, like Mr. Mosaic and all that stuff, Mr. Hip Hypnosis, I couldn't bloody find them. Uh, no doubt they exist somewhere in the DC universe, but they're that obscure. I couldn't find any information on them, so I'm sorry that I couldn't exactly inform you on who these guys were. I'm sure I'll be able to tell you more as they appear again in later issues if they do so. Um, I think I've covered absolutely everything, that's my spoiler and for this time it very much is a spoiler section because Stephanie Brown's back. Um, that's my spoiler um, section covered. Um, if you're reading this I'd love to hear from me in the, in the comments. You don't have to bother with like and subscribe or if you don't want to comment you don't have to. Uh, that's just the way I do things. 
um, but I do try to respond to your uh, comments I'm sometimes very busy and I can't uh, but I do try to respond to them I sometimes go back uh, two or three videos just to make sure that I, I do read them all uh, just to make sure that I can reply to comments in older videos as well so um, as always uh, I've covered absolutely everything uh, <laughs> having to take notes uh, there's that much going on hopefully in future issues I won't have to take notes because of the sheer story that's being set up here but um, hopefully in future I don't have to take notes so that's everything covered always do long sign offs I always hate signing off I like to stay and talk to you guys but I've been N7 Strider and I should go